Hello guys, welcome to another episode of the Yorkshire Dad. I am the Yorkshire Dad, if you didn't know that, there you go. Let me just say thank you for watching, much appreciated. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please give me a subscribe, I would much appreciate it. Today we have something new. Not that. Today we have something new. If you want to see that, link up there. Unboxing, brilliant. If you want to see something new, this is it. New feature. I'm always trying to think, what can I do? Because, quite frankly, vlogging daily life is quite difficult when you're going to work and back and school run, dance runs, uh, eating tea, getting them, getting the kids, getting the kids to bed. And so I'm trying to think of something new. So I'll come up with an idea. And link up. Link up there. Um, for the little mini video of a project of what I've put together for this fe for this feature and for this these episodes and it's a prop and here is the prop yes my feature is called BBC News Roulette yes BBC News Roulette that's what it's called and basically let me explain on the BBC News website there is there's a there's across the top there are um, sections. We're going to ignore the main section, which is like all the headlines. We're going to go with the nine sections. You know, so those nine sections, fairly straightforward. We've got things like tech, science, education, health, UK, entertainment and arts, world business, politics. Nine sections. So the idea is that once a week, or maybe more if I really like doing these, I'm going to spin the wheel of doom. Nope. BBC News Roulette and what I'll do is I will visit the BBC News website then I will go to that section and I will do an analysis detailed journalistic analysis by the Yorkshire Dad of the top story in that section and by detailed journalistic analysis I mean I'm going to give my opinion yes I'm going to give my opinion folks if you don't like people giving their opinion I suggest you find another YouTube video to watch, there are literally billions of them, don't worry there's plenty of out there for you, but if you do want to see the Orchard Dad's opinion about a random news story, um, I, I, this is the place to be. Yes, so let's jump right into it and go and spin the wheel of do, no sorry, the BBC News roulette for the very first time. Now clearly, now clearly, I do not know, there is no mirror here, I do not know what it has landed on. I'm quite scared to find out what it's landed on, but I'm going to turn it around now and find out. World! It's landed on world! Do you know, in all my test runs it's never landed on world, I'm amazed. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to visit BBC News. Right, there we go. Right, so we are on the home tab of the BBC News website. Here we are, and here we go. So, I spun the BBC News roulette wheel, and it landed on World. So, let's take a look what we've got going on in World. And quite frankly, I think we might have a clue from the home screen, but let's get it of a, a click anyway and see what happens. And yes, there we go. We have the Hurricane Irma, Irma damage, considerable headline. So let's get right in there and let's have a look at the article. Hurricane Irma has caused considerable damage on French island territories in the Caribbean and casualties are expected. France's president says the impact of Irma on St. Martin and St. Bart's would be hard and cruel, Emmanuel Macron has added. His overseas affairs minister later confirmed that at least two people dead and another two seriously injured. The Category 5 hurricane, the highest possible level, is now passing over the North Virgin Islands. The most powerful storm in a decade, with wind speeds of 295 kilometers per hour, that's 185 miles per hour, is also forecast by the US National Hurricane Center to pass near or just north of Puerto Rico, then north, near or just north 
off the coast of the Dominican Republic on Thursday. Hurricane Irma first hit Antigua and Barbuda before moving on to Saint, Saint Martin and Saint Bartholome. Bartholome? I can't say that. The French holiday destination, popularly known as St. Bart's, that's better. Significant damage is also being reported in the Dutch section of St. Martin, known as St. Martin. Don't laugh. The French interior minister, Gerard Collomb, said that the hurricane had caused major floods and destroyed buildings, including four of the most solid on the island. Thousands of people have been evacuated from at-risk areas across the Caribbean. Residents have flocked to shops for food, water and emergency supplies, and airports have closed on several islands, which are popular holiday destinations. In the US, Florida's Key West area has ordered mandatory evacuation, with landfall expected at the weekend. And it goes on and it goes on. Now, quite frankly, my opinion really does not matter, does it? Because in an insurance term, this is a act of God. I hate that term. It's, a, it's an act of nature. Um, you, you, I just cannot imagine, I cannot imagine what it is like to be caught up in something quite so so devastating. There is nothing you can do about it. Your, your enemy is a natural phenomenon. Um, it's a natural force. You, you can't stop it. You, you can't move it. You, you can't prevent it. All you can do is try to survive it. And can you imagine? Can you imagine winds of nearly 300 kilometers per hour battering your house. Wow. There's um, a clip of, a, of a, an English lady uh, called Alison Strand um, telling the BBC News about the dangerous conditions in Anguilla. Um, let's just play a little clip of that now. is probably about 15 to 20 minutes out now. Uh, we lost power about two minutes ago. I know they lost power on the other side of the island about an hour ago. Uh, you can you can hear the winds picking up. Uh, we've lost a lot of no. trees. She seems quite calm. And I've got to I've got to take my virtual cap off to her because she, she does appear to be quite calm. Uh, that's incredible really. Um, Oh, dear, what, what would you do? I mean, I'm just trying to put myself in a position of, of being there with, with the four girls and then Helen and the dogs and the family, you know, living in on the island or any of those islands. You know, some of these islands are predicted to to get a, a storm surge, a storm swell of, you know, uh, 15 to 20 feet. You know, the Turks and Caicos Islands, you know, they're forecasting 15 to 20 feet of storm surge water storm surge. The, these are tiny islands, you know. One, I read earlier on that the, the, the on some of these French territories that the four most substantially built buildings, that's, you know, we're talking, they've got, you know, they've got so few buildings on these islands that they, they talk about the four most substantially built are already destroyed or, or, or completely ruined. Uh, and you think that's the four most substantial, what, what chance does anybody else have? And you've just got to, I suppose, survival instinct kicks in, you know. But I, I, I've never been caught up in anything like this, you know. And you, I'm looking at the news and I'm looking at the floods, and I'm thinking this is incredible. You know, we've had floods in the in this country, um, the the major floods in in around York at the back end of 2014, 15. 2015, they were incredible, and I can remember driving past York um, on the North Ring Road and just water, the ring, it, just where you're just not used to seeing it, and 
I didn't feel scared. I was I was I was kind of amazed at what nature can do. And but you, you, I find it hard to be amazed at this a hurricane at what nature can do when people's lives are in danger. Um, you know, I can only hope and pray that that people can find shelter, can batten down the hatches, can protect themselves and can stay safe. But let's face it, the storm going through is just the start of it. Surviving that is just the start because a lot of these people are going to have to rebuild from scratch, rebuild their lives, rebuild everything. Uh, and of course, with floods in, in less developed areas, you end up with, with disease. And this isn't the end. You know, this is this is just the beginning, and for these islands that it hasn't even hit yet, this is just the beginning. It's the it's the precursor to the beginning. They know this is going to hit, but then it's what happens afterwards that they've got to um, they've got to get through as well. And I can only hope and and pray that that people are okay. Um, I, I can't have a rant about that kind of thing, can I? Um, you know, the, the rule, BBC rule, news roulette is going to land on whatever it lands on. Um, and I will take whatever appears on my screen. Um, but best of luck to everybody um, affected by this Hurricane Irma. And um, stay safe. And, you know, I hope that surviving the storm is one thing, but I hope you can find it within yourselves to rebuild. Right, that was the first episode of the Yorkshire Dad Does BBC News Roulette and um, I feel like a bit of an anti-climax because it was, it's not a great juicy, well it's certainly a juicy story but it's not one that I can really go tooth and nail at because it's more than nature, you know there's nobody to blame here, yeah, anyway. Thank you for watching. If you if you like the idea of this video, the first one's going to be rough and ready. Let's be honest. Um, but I'll be back with more BBC News roulette. No expense spared on the special effects. Um, in a week's time. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.